Hello, Jeff Cowan here from Jeff Cowan's Pro Talk. Thank you for watching and listening. Well, we're in week six of my new series of Hump Day Messages, and I know I've got another one here today that you're going to love. If you're really interested in being the best you can be with the highest survey scores, highest retention, and sales numbers, then what you want to do is not only listen to these messages, but sign up for one of my upcoming workshops later this fall or early next year. These are two-day events with 15 hours of content, just like you've been watching over the last several weeks. Now, to get signed up for one of those, it's easy. You simply call Brittany at 714-988-6885 and she will get you signed up. So with that, enjoy this message. I'll see you next week with another new message. And between now and then, make it another fantastic week because I know you will. Now, the other question I get is, is Jeff, you said that this would eliminate 85% of my heat cases. And Jeff, you said this would eliminate 85% of my bad CSI scores, survey scores. How can you prove that? Well, I can't. I can't. I mean, it's not like I can pull out a, a, a spreadsheet and say, she said this and this happened, and he said this and this happened, and he said this and this happened. It doesn't work that way. But here's what I can tell you. We have several hundred dealerships at ProTalk that we know use our process nearly to the letter, if not to the letter. Now, we know that because we phone shop them. We know that because we shop them in person. We know that because we visit them on regular business throughout the year, and they say it word for word and do it stroke by stroke as we're standing there. And you just can't, you can't not do it for three months, and then let's come back in and all of a sudden you're perfect at it. Now, we, so we know we've got several hundred dealerships that are doing it, and there's some commonalities. Typically, they're in the top 7% in the nation for the manufacturer they represent, their survey scores. Typically, there's their, their customer retention is well over 70% and approaching 80%. And typically, they have the highest sales per repair order out of all, all the dealerships that are out there, usually 2.5 and above. Now, if one dealership did that, good luck. 20 did it, you could say coincidence, but several hundred, it's this here. Here's, here's why I believe what I just told you. Now, this is whether it's the sales side or the service side. Here's what I believe. I've experienced it. I believe that most dealerships, when you go into you'll find managers that did not step into the leadership role and create processes for their people to follow. Now when that happens, the service advisors, we're talking about service, service advisors will recognize there's no leadership, recognize there's no processes, and they will then step into the leadership role themselves and create their own processes. There's a problem with that. If you've got four advisors out on your drive, which is what the average drive has, and they're establishing the process, that means you not only have four different processes, but you've probably got four different processes that are not, not even consistent from day to day. How do I know that? Give the average service advisor the leadership and, and, and uh, lead, leader ability and the ability to set the process, and here's what you'll get. Here's what their process will be every day. What gets me to 6 o'clock the fastest with the most amount of money and least amount of heat? There's their process. It'll change by the hour if it has to. It gets better. Customers come in. They look around. They see there's no processes. Or after a couple of business, they see there's no leadership. There's no consistent processes. So you know what they do? They then step into the leadership role. They then create the process, and then here's where it just gets right down goofy. They then grade you on your ability to fulfill their process, and you don't even know what it is. Now, I'm not playing around. I'm convinced that eight out of 10 car dealerships out there today have not stepped up in a leadership role and created processes for the people to follow, allowing their customers to come in, grab that leadership, take control, establish the process, and then grade us on it. My point, when you use word tracks, like realistic expectations, what it takes to be a service advisor, and the buy a suit technique, and the three option closes, and all these other word tracks I'm going to give you, what you're telling your customer is, is we know what we're doing. We've got processes. We've done this before. This isn't our first rodeo. You follow what I'm saying, and I'll get it done. And they'll recognize it like that. And you want to talk about retention, they will fly to you. They'll be glued to you. You want to talk about survey scores, they're going to hand them to you. On a silver platter, you want to talk about upsells, they'll just pull their wallet out and say, take what you want. <laughs> I'm telling you, they, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for processes. Okay, they're looking for processes. Because when they're talking to me, they know what they're getting. Let me, let, let me go a little bit deeper. I can see I'm hitting another here. See, here's what happens. Most dealerships out there today, hopefully not yours, but most dealerships. Customer calls in, I need to bring my car in. I'm sure we'd love for you to come in. When can you bring it in? Um, I could be there tomorrow. Oh, I can come in tomorrow? Great. What time do you guys open? 7 o'clock. Now, like I said earlier, they get there at 7 o'clock expecting to see what? You with a clipboard looking around everybody else for them with all their information because you're going to help them out. But they get there and see if there's five or six people in front of them in line and 7 o'clock really meant 7.30. So how did you start out the relationship? You told them what? You lied. 
So then you write them up, and they say, when do you think you'll know something? In their mind, that means when, 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 when are you going to have some uh, information for me? And you say, I should know in a little while. All right, now a little while to you is 11. A little while to them, if it's 7 in the morning, is 9. So they call you at 9 and say, what do you know? It's been a while. And you say, well, your car's not even in the shop. So now the second contact you had with them today, what would you prove to them again? And then they say, well, when are you going to know something? You say, I should, have everything. I should know everything I need to know by 2 o'clock. They interpret that as you're going to have it done at 2. So when you call them at 2 and say, I found the problem. Do you want to do it? They go, what do you mean you just found the problem? It's not done. So for the third time today, what did you prove to them? And when you say something, it doesn't mean nothing. And that's why they bring the keys and say, you got the information. See ya. But you see here, what happens is by using techniques like this, I establish a check-in time. Get here early means you have to wait. Get here late means you can lose your place in line. They get there at 8 and I'm standing there and I'm ready for them or if I prove them to them right out of the gate. I'm telling the truth. And then I tell them, based on what we've talked about, it's your vehicle's probably not going to get the shop. It's 8 o'clock right now. It's probably not going to get the shop for an hour and a half. It's going to be 9.30. Let's give the technician, the factory training technician, an hour and a half to get it diagnosed. We're now at 11 o'clock, so that means that somewhere between 10.45 and 11.15, expect a telephone call from me with an update of what, we've, what we're doing. I call them between 10.45 and 11.15. What's the second thing I've proven to them today? And then I call them and tell them that what's, what's causing their concern and how long it's going to take. And then I, 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 and I, I, uh, I uh, deliver on that. What do they learn about working with Jeff today? That guy says it. It's going to happen. And that's what they'll pay through their nose for. Just arm the trust. Exactly. Who said that? Pay him three times. There's all kinds of trust. You see, that's what it is. I mean, look at the biggest frustrations. What's your biggest frustration with the doctor? He tells you, you get there at 9 and you don't see him until 10. What's your, right? I mean, what's your biggest frustration when you fly someplace? They said it was going to leave at 10.45 and they're still sitting on the gate. Everybody starts freaking out of the airplane. They this all the time. They don't know there's a half hour building the schedule, sometimes an hour. They're supposed to take off at 10.45 and they're still bored. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. Okay. It's all right. All right. So, I mean, same thing here. So that's what you're doing. You're establishing that you're in control. You've got leadership. You've got processes. Processes that we follow. Means I know what's going to happen. I know what result we're going to get, and you're going to be happy. Force me to follow your process, and I don't know what's going to happen. That's what you're telling without telling me. Any questions on that?